I'm painting this grass landscape in gouache today and what I start with as always is my light sketch with colored pencil and since this is a landscape and it has pretty easy uh, shapes I can get away with only drawing in a few of the, the main areas that I can see. So the background, the foreground and then just a few of the different patches. And I'm using gouache for this. Uh, titanium white, cadmium yellow, raw sienna, then English red, you could also use burnt sienna, uh, ultramarine blue and burnt amber. I'm painting on a ceramic palette today. And I'm starting by adding a wash of raw sienna just to get rid of the white of the paper. And you can see I'm using this and a, a little bit of English red for the redder parts of the, the grassy patches that I can see. And at this point I'm using very diluted paint so it's very watery. I'm also adding a bit of background with ultramarine blue just to fill in the paper with a bit of paint and I'm using a stronger mix of ultramarine blue and burnt amber and I'm adding a little bit of structure so I will of course redefine this later but just to give a, a little bit of of structure to the background. I'm adding a warm green so you can see with my selection of colors I only have a warm green in store so this is what I will use and I also think the scene will benefit from the use of warm colors here. Uh, so we have the slightly cooler background and then the warm foreground with these sort of golden grasses and plants that are hit by the sun. You can see I'm working with my big brush in layers and I'm adding with a slightly dry brush these sort of textures that you can see here and this will give the impression of grass that's moving in the wind and I'm using different uh, paint layers here so I've started with these darker ones and now I'm adding in uh, almost white and now the, the green area in the middle. And I always try to think about uh, organic structures and which direction would the grass move in. And how can I paint this so it will actually look more like grass. So this dry brush technique uh, actually helps a lot with this. You can see I'm adding a bit of green, some patches just here and there. Now I'm adding in white also with a dry brush to show that the, the sunlight hits the grass there and leaves this sort of highlight effect. And I'm painting in the forest in the background. So these are spruces, very dark tall trees. And I've mixed again ultramarine blue and burnt amber to this almost black mix. And I'm adding a bit of a greenish layer over that to indicate the, the green of the spruces. And so this is a typical forest for the area that I grew up in. It's really for me it's the it's what a forest would look like when I think of a generic forest and I think of these kind of woods. <laughs> it's actually quite beautiful there. And I'm adding a bit of shadow to my um, green parts. So these are foxgloves between these grass patches. 
also really characteristic for this area. So you have these big spruce forests and then these clearings or these large sort of like grass meadows with this golden grass and foxgloves, blueberries. You can see I'm always reworking the areas that I went over earlier. It's always refining a bit more. Adding white back in where I removed it and now I'm actually adding a bit of red. So this is a mix with my English red to add more of these reddish grasses that I can see. And bit by bit it's starting to look like a landscape instead of just blobs of paint. And the great thing with gouache is that you can always overpaint what you did. Now I'm adding more tree structures in the background. So they have these really thin long trunks. And with a smaller brush I'm adding more of my red mix. So now I can really start to work with this dry brush technique add the texture and this sort of looks like single tufts of grass and this is exactly what I want to to have and now I'm adding a bit of my raw sienna so more of these golden undertones that you can see in the landscape and I'm trying to hold my brush in a way so that you can actually see what I'm doing so uh, a lot of this is holding the brush straight down so and I know that's quite hard to see on camera because the camera is straight above my hand. And I'm adding back in the white highlights that I overpainted. At this stage I add almost no water to my paint. So just to pick it up but you can see this dry brushing effect works best when you use the gouache like it comes from the tube. Just for mixing here and there I will add a tiny bit of water but it's mainly just how it comes from the tube. Here I'm painting a few more of these spruce structures that I can see and that will give the background a bit more definition. And I'm restating a few of the trunks with a slightly lighter tone. So I don't want too much uh, highlights in my background because I want the foreground, the, the meadow actually to stand out. And now I'm adding with the edge of my flat brush these uh, fox gloves. And at this time in the year the pink flowers that these uh, beautiful plants have are almost gone. So. All we are left with are these uh, green stalks that are rising up from the grass. I'm adding a few of the leaves with a slightly darker green and now I'm using a cat's tongue brush and with that I can just dab in a few leaf-like leaf structures. And with the same technique uh, and a lighter paint I go over the same areas again to get this layered effect of leaves that are overlapping. I'm also adding a few highlights to the fox gloves and I've mixed a bit of yellow into my green mix so that I can bring in some of the flowers in the background and a bit of warmth into the whole scene. And I'm using my rigger brush to add a few of the, the grass structures. So these brushes are great. You will also see me use this in other tutorials and I really like them 
for adding small organic structures like grass blades or these small details, small highlights. So these have really long bristles and a really small tip that you can add your highlights with. And the dry brush technique also works with the rigger brush. Now I'm adding the grass in the foreground that's really light and that's catching the sun. And I'm also doing that with a rigger brush. You can see I'm trying to paint this in a way so uh, that I can catch the, the movement of the whole uh, grass patch. I'm trying to keep my paint strokes a bit random, so I'm I'm not trying to uh, get any any order into the scene. And I'm adding a bit of highlight grasses in the back too. This is afternoon light, and soon the sun will set in the mountains. From time to time you can see me dabbing away paint with my finger, so I do this when I just want to uh, reduce uh, a bit of the intensity of the paint. And try it sometime. Uh, painting with your finger really works great sometimes. There are just a few flower heads left and I'm adding this sort of muted pink A bit more contrast in the foreground with these darker strokes and then I'm adding this highlight effect in the front. And now I'm removing my masking tape so this sketch is almost finished for me now. I'm repainting the edge there and I'm just restating a bit of the darker grass in the back. And now I'm painting in this wooden uh, structure. I'm, I'm actually not quite sure what this is, so it almost looks like a wooden cross. I'm adding more contrast, more dark areas. And a bit of highlight on this wooden cross thing. So in the background are these yellow flowers peeking through the grass and the last highlights and I think I'm almost done with the sketch. So it's always hard to stop at the end but at some point you, you have to stop noodling in more and more details. So that's the finished sketch. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you enjoyed it, then uh, let me know in the comments, give me a like or subscribe to my channel. And also if you have any questions or any requests of what you want to see in the future on this channel, then uh, just let me know. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video and until then, happy sketching.